I like to get it wrong. We have won eight consecutive world championships in a row and hasn't been done um, by any other team in any sport. It's difficult enough to win one. And I think we have been able to set the right objectives every single year with the team. And I believe that we simply got it wrong. Toto Wolf is one of those, if you know, you know guys. In lots of places, he passes a typical successful global businessman, a well-dressed multilingual guy on the move. But for a growing segment of the sports-obsessed world, he's a guess who I saw whip out your phone to prove it celebrity. The CEO, co-owner, and team principal of the Mercedes AMG Patronus Formula One team, Wolf commands a billion dollar enterprise, one that's implanted itself into racing fans' consciousness with an unprecedented run of success, a run that just at least took a pause. We knew that at a certain stage that winning streak is gonna end. But all of us see this as a fantastic test because with all the business issues and, and, and problems and challenges that, uh, that need to be faced, keeping the cool under pressure, uh, trying to believe in the science and trust. It's physics, it's not mystics. But giving it the necessary time and understanding that you can't accelerate learning in, to a certain degree, that's fantastic. Formula One, it is one of the most difficult sports to succeed in. Literally everything has to come together, man and machine, within these race weekends. And the margins of success or failure are incredibly, incredibly small. We're talking about thousands of seconds that could make the difference. I'm not worried about anything in my professional life. Things happen for a reason. My perspective is beyond 10 years. It's not just a single race. The, the weekends or the races we lose are the ones that our competitors will regret the most because we learn the most. It's gonna make us better. In racing, if you're not winning, you're losing. It's just that simple. And after one of the most trying years in the team's history, Wolf is hell-bent on showing he still knows how to win. Monaco occupies a quirky spot in the collective global imagination. Yachts, casinos, and of course, fast cars. It's tiny, the second smallest country in the world. So small that when you're driving in from the airport in nearby Nice, if you miss the exit, you could end up in Italy, theoretically. Like the signage has changed. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Once you're there, it has a fairy tale quality right down to the palace that sits on the hill overlooking the harbor. There's an actual prince living there with his family. And Prince Albert's family has long been beyond supportive of the sport that put Monaco on the map. But I'm here to meet up with someone many consider modern F1 royalty. I got you. Copy me. What they used to do in the past is that they just drove with doors open, but you need to be careful that you're not crashing anybody out, pedestrians or so. Wow. And then leave it open. This is, that is much more pleasant so on a hot day in Monaco. <laughs> I mean, obviously this car attracts attention, but you now attract attention. Actually, it's an interesting life experiment for me because I'm not a sports person that grew up with that. I think let's close it for the time being. That kind of public persona happened to me much later in my life where I think my character was uh, already done and couldn't influence me in a negative way. It shows that the, the popularity of the sport and of, um, and of the team and public re recognition will be always something that is flattering and you must take it for granted. Tell me about Monaco. I mean, this is the cradle in many ways of this sport. How do you view it? Formula One is Monaco. Monaco is Formula One. If you ask someone that 
has heard about Formula One and knows a little bit about it, they will associate Formula One with Monaco. Uh, it's by far the most popular race. Now, obviously, Miami was great and Las Vegas coming in. Hopefully, they're gonna go. Big, they're gonna be big as, as well. But Monaco was always a glamorous town that was known for Formula One. Wolf, who grew up in Austria, picked up racing at 17. But by 1994, his performance on the track sent him searching for another challenge. He looked to business. As a young man, if you can't be a racing driver, you'd like to be an investment banker. That at least was uh, how, it, how it happened to me. In the late 1990s, the internet came out. And with it, the boom of uh, startup businesses with valuations going astronomical, a little bit to what we have experienced until most recently. And I, I jumped on that bandwagon. Through investing firms March 15 and March 16, he enjoyed the success of the dot-com era and also the less sexy world of investing in industrial companies. His success in the investment world allowed him to get back into the business of racing. And then came the call. Do you want to become a partner in a Mercedes Formula One team? And uh, you literally had to pinch myself. I'm very excited, obviously, to be representing Mercedes-Benz in Formula One. In 2013, Toto would take over management of the Mercedes F1 team, but his investments in the team also meant that he would own about a third of the overall franchise. A good investment, considering under his leadership, the Mercedes team would go on an unprecedented run. Lewis Hamilton would win seven straight drivers' championships, and Mercedes would win eight constructors' titles. That's the team prize that takes into account point totals from each team's two drivers. It was a level of domination rarely seen in F1, or any sport for that matter. Toad would also turn the sport into a true family business, marrying his wife Susie, herself a former British pro driver. She most recently ran a team on the Formula E circuit. That's the electric car division of the FIA, the governing body that also includes Formula One. I got to catch up with a couple just over the border in France with a view you might only get dining with the ultimate motorsport power couple. So what is it like for the two of you to work in the same business? Well, I can't speak for Toto, but I, I certainly, I love what he does. I'm, I'm very, very proud, but I also love following it from the sidelines. I love watching the races, coming to some races, but I also love, I mean, from him, I learned so much over the years, which is part of the reason why I felt that I could take on the role in Formula E. Susie started racing even earlier than Toto, when she was about eight years old, deciding to become a racing driver at the age of 13. Susie and Toto's past crossed when she was with Mercedes-Benz and German touring cars. I went to a race in New York and I remember standing, being able to see the Statue of Liberty with these electric racing cars and obviously then Dieselgate happened and everything sped up in the automotive industry. And then I thought, this, is, this has got something and I literally just copy and pasted Toto's deal with Mercedes and said, okay, I don't, I don't need a salary, but I want equity. I remember there was one instance at the beginning in Formula E we, we were struggling and I had both cars in the top and one after the other, they all stopped with the same problem in the drive shaft. And I was getting phone calls from people, obviously very, dis very unhappy that, that we had this issue. And then I called Toto and he said, what happened? I said, we have this issue with the drive shafts. And he said, sort it. I said, well, yeah, I, I'm gonna try and sort it, but I'm not the technical director. I, I don't even know what the issue is. And he's like, it's your problem. You have to sort it. But it was also in that moment that I realized that the buck stops with you. It's about very quickly fixing issues and, and finding solutions. During his tenure with Mercedes, Wolf has become a master at solving problems and managing talent, including Hamilton, indisputably the most famous driver on the circuit over the past decade. Wolf's role as both owner and manager of a record-setting sports franchise is unique. Imagine if the Patriots Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick were the same person which is how Toto ended up teaching a case about himself at Harvard Business School. Someone like a Toto Wolf, any team principal really, is, is responsible for hundreds of people, right? Mercedes has 1,800 people across the, the factory and the unit where they actually look after the engines. So 1,800 people who he has to manage. And uh, what struck me is the remarkable attention to detail that he brings to the table. The governing body, the FIA, is set up to not have anyone win. Uh, eight times in a row. This is all about trying to maintain a competitive balance. So against all those odds in an incredibly difficult environment, the Mercedes team was able to keep a winning streak alive for eight years. 
that I thought was a was a really interesting premise for a case study. Anita Albersi is a Harvard Business School professor specializing in the intersection of entertainment, media, and sports. She's written case studies on figures like LeBron James, Maria Sharapova, The Rock, and Beyonce. Putting people at the center, uh, analyzing mistakes very rigorously, having an open atmosphere in which everyone can speak up if they see something that needs to be fixed, and then also actually having the willingness to, to try to fix what has been going wrong. This relentless pursuit of winning and, and never giving in to complacency. The last 10 years have been a critical growth period for Formula One racing, spurred by the $4.4 billion purchase of F1 by John Malone's Liberty Media in 2017. Toto saw firsthand how much the ambition for the sport accelerated. With Liberty coming in, although we were skeptical at the beginning, that's where we really started to have this massive upswing. And together with the governing body, the FIA, we were able to put on a show during COVID as the only global sport, and it obviously helped a lot. The business of Formula One, it's a bit more complicated than it might seem from just watching a race. There's the global governing body for the 10 teams, each of which is an independently run business. Like pro basketball or football teams, each has its own ownership group. Those teams get cuts of overall Formula One revenue based on each season's performance. Those teams also have sponsors who pay for the right to have their names on the cars, helmets, or other team materials like crew shirts. Finally, there are promoters. They buy the right from F1 to host races in individual locations, usually for several years at a time. They recoup their money and earn profits from selling hospitality and other sponsorships. Since buying F1 in 2017, Liberty has grown revenue for the circuit by 20%, despite a global pandemic. Revenue totaled $2.1 billion in 2021. Being a shareholder in a company and, and managing it, it is always about profitable growth. Nevertheless, the biggest part of the return on investment was the advertising value that we generated for our Mercedes and our partners. Lap time and performance always outweighed profitability. Perhaps the biggest change came with a radically disrupted media landscape. So it's helpful to have one of the world's most influential media and communications companies as your owner. What are you doing? Just sending advice. And he is through. See you later. Social media, staunchly resisted by the previous management, became a new vehicle for promotion and to connect teams and drivers to their fans, augmenting, even supplanting the once stodgy single broadcast for each race. Now, instead of engaging a couple dozen Sundays a year, fans had deep and direct ongoing access. And then there was that show. All I do is pray for a safe race. You need to respect the speed, but the second a driver has fear, you need to retire. The Mercedes team wasn't included in the first season of Drive to Survive. That was Toto's decision. One of the reasons I didn't want to do it, I didn't want our engineers and drivers to act like in a movie, yeah, right. um, rather than being fully concentrated on the job. While capturing failures on camera might not have been ideal for Toto and his team, for the sport of F1, it's been a massive success. After seeing what one season did for the sport and his rivals, he signed up for season two, and an entirely new level of fame and notoriety for his team and for him followed. It launched a boom and it opened up a completely new audience, different to the hardcore fans, especially in the United States. With Austin and Miami already on the calendar, in 2023, F1 will return after four decades to Las Vegas for a nighttime race that will include the famous Vegas Strip. It's quickly becoming one of the hottest tickets in sports. With the three U.S. races and five in North America, including Montreal and Mexico City, the sport is building a massive U.S. audience, which is always part of Liberty Media's business case. The races on U.S. soil are proving wildly popular in terms of attendance, drawing some of the biggest crowds across the circuit. Miami, in its first year, attracted 330,000 fans across the weekend. Austin was the single biggest event of the year with 440,000 spectators. We arrived in Miami and there was lots of, of young screaming women, Toto, Toto, Toto. And I thought, wow, that's new. <laughs> because before, young women would kind of come up to me and say, oh, I love your racing. And, but now they come up like, oh, I love Toto, I love your husband. I'm like, yeah, so do I. <laughs>
this is a season like no other. Unbelievable start from Hamilton. It's just insane. Oh, they touched! The growing audience was used to the week-to-week -week drama of the paddock and the pits, but nothing could prepare fans or teams for the 2021 season. It culminated in beyond dramatic fashion, with the driver championship decided in the final race in Abu Dhabi on a judgment call by the official. What happened in Abu Dhabi at the last race really captivated people, even if you weren't into motorsport. I mean, the, the battle, how ferocious it got. There are five lapped cars standing between him and the race leader. It's these magnificent brands, it's these gladiators on track, giving it everything. All the cars ahead of you are allowed to overtake Hamilton. It's just everything is happening in that paddock. No! No! All the politics. This is a mess. The interaction among the stakeholders. Mikey, that is so not right. That is so not right. You think you have the championship, then it's lost. This is it. Another certain stage in Jeddah, three races before the end. I smashed my headphones because I thought in that minute, Lewis was brake tested and we lost the championship. And then you realize 10 seconds later, it's actually on. He just needs to win the race. We're letting Netflix in and they are seeing things that otherwise, if you look at the pure sports broadcasting, you wouldn't realize and that by itself. Formula One is drama and had always been on track and off track. There's too much at stake and now that's being captured by the lenses. Toto says he hasn't watched more than a couple episodes of the show and has not watched the final episode of last season. I certainly didn't want to be reminded, but I felt we needed to watch it once. And I watched, of course, the last episode. And Toto said, do you think I should watch it? I was like, you know what? Don't. I I've done it for both of us. Yeah. It's done and dusted. The new season not only brought little relief, but more challenges. New regulations required a new car design, and Mercedes simply got it wrong, in a way that no in-season tinkering could fix. A cost cap was introduced in the 2021 season, and the jury's still out on how much parity it will bring to the circuit. It did mean Mercedes couldn't simply throw money at its design mistake. In the end, Mercedes failed to win a ninth straight team title, and neither of its drivers was ever in real contention for the driver's championship. To make it worse for Toto and his team, arch rival Red Bull added a constructor's title to Max Verstappen's second straight driver's championship. The winning streak has definitely come to an end, and I'm sure it's been a really tough year for everyone at Mercedes. What goes to the very heart of why they are so successful is this idea of realizing that losing is always just around the corner, that the winning at some point will have to end. They were so rigorous in their approach. They always analyze everything, win or lose. They were never complacent. And I think that sets them up really well for future success. So on race day, um, this office is live onto the racetrack. Toto's main office is at team headquarters in Northamptonshire couple hours outside of London. This is where the majority of the team employees work and only a very small portion ever see cars on the track in person on a regular basis. When I'm sitting on my station at the racetrack, all the engineers, we talk to the various channels and it could well be that the engineers are sitting very much here. I wouldn't know the difference. Right. And um, whatever time zone we are, you can see that it's 30, engineers that are sitting here working live on strategy, giving us live information about the state of the car. And all what we see on the track is right in front of us for them to see. So my channels are basically open to, I would say, probably 50 engineers that I could have a direct discussion with if right. I wanted. But also for us, we have a, a strict um, intercom protocol that we follow. Um, and you can say it's almost like in an airplane. Our ambition is to win every single one, but in our sport, it's about physics and not mystics. We got it wrong with the physics this year, and it is about how can we recover. I see that as a real opportunity for us because all of these people have been here when they saw how good it was going um, and now how difficult it can be. And that's gonna be an important learning from them also in the future. You will not take it for granted that winning a championship is easy. So I believe there's always something good in getting it wrong. Um, 
even though it feels difficult when it happens. Have you ever been on a track? I have never been on a track. Never? No. That's what I need to know. Just hold on tight. Hold on tight. Yeah. <laughs> I like that we're racing Lewis, though. That's not so bad, no? No, not a bad. Not a bad way to spend a Tuesday. The Circuit of the Americas, as the Austin racetrack is known, is empty on this scorching summer day save for a few dozen Mercedes personnel and some very excited Mercedes sponsors from CrowdStrike. Toto, along with Hamilton, are hosting top CrowdStrike executives for what feels like the ultimate sponsor perk, driving around an F1 track with the world's most famous driver and his also very famous boss. It's more evidence of the big money and big audience opportunity for Mercedes and F1 in America. The US continues to fall in love with the spectacle and drama. In the past, it would have been a sticker on the car and I give you visibility. And Formula One was very successful at that because we are the only true big global sport. And what has happened over the last few years that our audiences in the US literally went through the sky. We generate about a billion and a half audience um, every year, but it's involved to much more of an integrated partnership. And it's not a sponsorship anymore in that sense. We, have companies that are working together. We try to increase sales. Uh, we utilize our network to really help the business itself. But our largest Grand Prix are about 100 million live audience. Some of them, and Austin is a good example, more than 400,000 people across the weekend. And the marketing side, the visibility basically is the icing on the cake and just comes on top. Wow. I think we have been able to really shape and um, identify our core values. I feel we're in a good place in having three races in the US, one in Mexico and one in Brazil. It gives us a good footprint in the Americas, beyond uh, Europe, Australia, Asia, and it justifies it as a global sport. This is a good setting. Okay. You can really go full throttle. It'll get a little bit of rotation, but it won't spin out. Perfect. With every lap, every overseas trip, and a season that's only expanding, next year there will be 24 races around the world, Toto moves ever closer to a crossroads. He signed a three-year contract extension at the end of 2020. Moving out of the day-to-day -day after that, and remaining an owner, likely a vocal and interested one, feels like a real possibility. For now, his sole focus, as F1 gets more global and more profitable, is getting Mercedes back on top. That was um, a racing driver turned finance person, came back as a team owner and team manager. And I'm also the trainer. I love the sport and this is what I enjoy doing at the moment. But I feel when it's the fifth time in a row and you're finishing second or third rather than winning, these things, these negative emotions still kick in. At the end, the joint target, the joint objective is so massive that we just need to remind ourselves in these moments that we just want the same. We're just seeing the solution somewhere. So we just need to get together and say, what is it that we want to do? Data important to develop a quick car, but data don't make decisions, humans do. 